Our next lesson for Module 1 comes from, module, from Lesson 1.3b on ordering real numbers. And our goal for this lesson is to arrange a set of real numbers in order, usually from least to greatest, but sometimes it might be in order from greatest to least. All right. Now, in order to do this lesson, I have some steps for you to write down. And it looks like a lot, but you guys need to make sure that you get, all, get this all written down. In order to arrange a set of numbers, uh, I'm not sure why the word time is written there, so let's just cross that out. All right. To arrange a set of real numbers, first thing that you want to do, convert each number to a decimal form. Now, if it's an irrational number, you're just going to use an estimate to um, help us convert it to a decimal form. Next thing that you want to do after you have your numbers as a decimal is graph the numbers on a number line. And then finally, you want to read the numbers from left to right to order from least to greatest, or read the numbers from right to left in order to order them from greatest to least. All right, take a moment and write that, pause the video, and write that down. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at a couple examples with you uh, on what, this, what the homework assignments, homework problems might look like for this lesson. First, first problem that we want to look at, we want to compare these two values using greater than, less than, or equal to. So we have 7 plus 4, and we have 5 plus, I'm sorry, square root of 7 plus 4, and 5 plus the square root of 6. So in the, in the circle, in the middle, we want to fill that in eventually with greater than, less than, or equal to. So I've got a couple irrational numbers in this problem that I need, to, I need to simplify a little bit or estimate a little bit in order to be able to complete this problem accurately. So the square root of 7, I'm going to go ahead and make a number line over here. I need to figure out what two perfect squares are closest to the square root of 7. That's going to be the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead... And for me, I'm going to go ahead and place the square root of 7, probably right about th there, okay? The square root of 4 we know is 2, the square root of 9 we know is 3. So this tells me that the square root of 7 must be 2 point something. All right, and guys, that might be enough information in order for us to be able to figure this out. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with the square root of 6 on the other side. And hopefully you'll be able to understand my method for that in just a moment. So same thing with the square root of 7. The square root of 6 is in between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. I'm going to put the square root of 6 a little bit closer to the square root of 4. Again, I know that the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. And so what this tells me is the same thing. The square root of 6 is going to be 2 point something as well. All right? So instead of, instead of the square root of 7, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 point something. All right? 2 point something plus 4. All right, and I'm going to rewrite 5 plus 2 point something. All right, what that something is, it's not going to make a grand difference in the end result of the problem because we're just adding, if we're focusing just on our, our um, whole numbers out in front of the decimal, that should be enough for us to answer this problem because when we go ahead and add 2 point something plus 4, will give us 6 point something. And again, we still don't know what that something is, and that's okay. On the other side, 5 plus 2 point something is going to equal 7 point something. So it really doesn't matter what the decimals are, because the whole numbers out in front of the decimal are where the real value of the numbers are at. And we see that 6 point something must be less than 7 point something. Okay? So some sort of work like that to tell me that one number is less than, greater than, or equal to another number is what I'm looking for for this type of problem. All right, for our next example, our directions are to order 4.6 where the 6 repeats, 
and then square root of 13 plus 1, and then 2 pi minus 1 from least to greatest. So it, the instructions that I had for you guys at the start of class were to convert the numbers into decimal. So again, we're trying to order these three numbers from least to greatest, and to start with 4.6 repeating. If we were to round that to one decimal place, I would say that 4.6 repeating is approximately equal to actually 4.7. Okay, so that's my first. That's my first number that I'm going to estimate to one decimal place. Next one that I'm going to estimate. I'm going to draw little columns to separate, keep them separated. My next number that I'm going to estimate is the square root of 13 plus 1. So for the square root of 13, I'm going to place it on a number line. That falls in between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. And I would actually put that really close to the middle. I know the square root of 9 is going to be 3. The square root of 16 is going to be 4. So the square root of 13 is going to be approximately equal to 3 point something. And I don't know what that something is. And if it's important later, then I'll figure it out. But 3 point something. But I can't forget about that plus 1. So square root of 13 plus 1 is going to equal 4 point something. Now when I look back over here and see 4.7, it becomes clear to me pretty quickly that I need to figure out exactly what that is. So square root of 13, I'm going to make a couple of guesses. My first guess, I'm going to guess 3.5. And I'll take in square root 3.5. So 3.5 times 3.5, multiply 5 times 5 gives me 25, carry the 2. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. 0 for a placeholder, 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So I do some adding, 5 plus 0 is 5, 7 plus 5 is 2, carry the 12, carry the 1, to get 12.25. Okay? A little bit small. A little bit smaller than 13. So I'm going to make one more guess. I'm going to guess 3.6. So 3.6 times 3.6. 6 times 6 is 36. Carry the 3. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 3 is 21. 0 for a placeholder. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. Add again. 6 plus 0 is 6, 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 0 is 2, and 1 plus 0 is 0. So I get 12.96. Again, smaller than 13. So my first guess of 3.5 was not a good guess. So I need to make one more guess. I'm going to guess 3.7 this time. This one did not help me. So I'm guessing 3.7 times 3.7. 7 times 7 is 49. Carry the 4. 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 4 is 25. 0 for a place value holder. 3 times 7 is 21. Now 3 times 3 is 9, plus, one, plus 2 is 11. Now I add. 9 plus 0 is 9. 5 plus 1 is 6, 2 plus 1 is 3, and bring down the 1. So now my options for a best guess, 12.96 and 13.69. Well, this one's going to be closer, so I'm going to say that square root of 13 is approximately equal to 3.6, so the square root of 13 plus 1 is going to be 4.6, okay? So square root of 13 point, square root of 13.1 is going to give me 4.6. All right, over here in orange I still have approximately 4.7. Now one more, one more to order. I need 2 pi minus 1. 
Well, pi, I'm going to say that's approximately equal to 3.14. So I need to take 3.14. And if I have two of those, I need to multiply it by 2. 2, point, two times 4 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So I have 6.28. And from that, I'm going to subtract 1, because I have this minus 1 here. So I'm subtracting 1, and I get 5.28. All right, so here's my numbers again. I'm going to rewrite them down, further down. I have a number that's approximately 4.7. I have a number that's approximately 4.6. And I have a number that's approximately, I'm going to round this. Add those two, or estimate 5.28, and I get 5.3. So here's my numbers, 4.7. 4.6 and 5.3. So obviously if I'm going to put those on a number line. 4.6 would be my smallest number. But remember, it's not 4.6. It's the square root of 13 plus 1. So when I order these from least to greatest, I have the square root of 13 plus 1 is my first number. 4.6 repeating is my second number. And then 2 pi minus 1 as my last number. All right? Make sure that you guys write down any questions you have. We'll go over uh, the bell work and some other additional examples tomorrow in class. Sorry this video was late. I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day, and we'll talk more later.